Let me see. The first thing I want to talk about is a peep. What is a peep? What is a peep? For those who know, can you answer? You can unmute and answer, or you can use the chat box and answer, whichever. What is a peep? When we talk about peep, what comes to mind? What is your understanding of peep? What is your understanding of peep? I mean, many of you have heard of that word peep many times. So what is peep? What is peep? What is peep? Okay, I'm seeing responses. Share your own view. Everybody, someone says percentage in profit. All right, so that's the full meaning, percentage in profit. Um, the rest of us, what is a peep? What is a peep? Change in value between two currencies. Okay, another person, what is a peep? What is a peep? Another person, what is a peep? No one else knows what a peep is. I can take one more person, what is a peep? And then I'll explain. One more person, what is a peep? What do you understand by a peep? Have you ever heard the word peep before? If you have heard the word peep before, put 333. I mean, for me, it was it was a bit complex at first to understand what a peep meant. But over time, you know, where I was able to get a I was able to get an understanding concerning what peep means. What so if you've heard what if you've heard the word peep, P I P, could you put two to two? If you've heard the word PIP before, please put two to two. Someone says significant increase or decrease of the value of a currency. All right, brilliant. But if you've heard of the word PIP before, put two to two. If you've heard of the word PIP before, put two to two. If you've heard the word PIP before, put two to two. Let me see how many twos. The rest persons, if you've not heard of the word PIP before, put three, three, three. If you've not heard of it before, then put three, three, three for me. If you've heard of it, put 222. Two, two. If you haven't heard of it, put um, 333. Three. So everyone, you have to fall under a category. That's what it means. Heard of it, 222. Two. If you've not heard of it, 333. Three. There is no fence. You have to choose one. Heard of it or not. Okay. I see a lot of twos. So that's to say that a lot of persons have heard of that peep before. All right, great. So now, based on what was said, it's actually correct. A peep simply means, in, in its word, it means percentage in price, right? Um, however, um, if you want to look at it from a basic point of view, right, a peep is a unit of measurement. So I like to look at it as a unit of measurement because that's what it is, a unit of measurement. It is a unit of measurement. So it is the way we measure the market when prices go either up or down when prices go either up or down so the change in these prices according to what someone said either up or down right the measurement of this change in prices is called a peep right so while some people would say um they made a let's say Let's say if something was five and then it has increased in price to 10. So why they say that that's an increase in price. So that movement from five to 10 for us, we call it a peep. So it has moved five peeps, right? So while you look at it, okay, something has increased by five. We say in the Forex market, you know, um, that, that moved by five peeps, you know, that increased by five peeps. So people talk about things like they are trying to catch a peep so that they can take a trip, you know, all those kind of, I caught five peeps, you know, that's, it's a language in the Forex market that is often used to describe, you know, um, the increase or the decrease on a particular currency or exchange um, in a particular currency. All right, so that is a peep in a nutshell. But now in practical terms, in practical terms, when we're looking at the Forex market, for example, how can we then identify a peep? How can we then identify a peep? Now, let me show you. Okay, I don't want if I share my screen, this board would not be showing. So let's stick with the board. Now, when you look at a particular currency, for example, let's use the most famous currency, Euro USD, right? Euro USD. From what we taught the last class, we said that euro USD simply means what we are saying is that one euro, one euro, right, equals to let's say one point one three 
five, uh, let's say six. For example, 1.1356, that's what we're saying. Uh, then there's always another number here, let's say five, six, seven. All right. So we're saying that if we want to buy one euro, we would need to give $1.13567 for us to get one euro. All right. So it's vice versa. If you have one euro, it means that you have $1.13567. That's what it means. You guys get that. So one euro is equivalent to this. And this amount fluctuates. But when you check Google or when you check the internet, most times it will say that one euro probably goes for uh, one euro probably goes for what you might just see is maybe 1.13, right? But apart from this 1.13, there are some other numbers that the Google search might not tell you, but that is the current state of that particular currency, right? And if you check your MetaTrader 4, that's why you see, you know, some, some of the, most of the, what's it called, currency pairs with numbers like these, some you see 0. Point, maybe 0. 0.0576, you know, you see some numbers. But when you check Google, you just see probably something like 1.13, right? So aside this third number, this third value here, this number one, this three, aside this third value here, there are other numbers, you know, that are attached to it. But when we talk about PEEP, let me now write this, this um, number well, 13567 USD gives us one euro. But when we talk about PEEP, we're looking at the fourth number after the decimal place. When we talk about a PEEP, we are only taking into account, we are taking into account the fourth number after the decimal place. Another way to look at it as well is, when we talk about PEEP, we're taking the second to the last number. I personally used to remember PEEP using this format. So instead of counting one, two, three, four, I'd rather just say the second to the last number this is the last number seven is always the peep. So you can say the fourth number after the decimal point or the second to the last number. And if you look at the metadata four, which I will probably show us at the end of this class to show you practically, but you can as well open your metadata four um, and, and see it for yourself. You will see that all the numbers for all the currency pairs would always have this format. At least they would have five numbers after the decimal point. The only um, currency pairs that will not have that is the JPYs. Any currency pair that has JPY in it, like USD JPY, AUD JPY, Euro JPY, you know, currency pairs like that would not have the format like this. I will explain that of JPY shortly. But for now, for a peep in a normal currency pair, for example, Euro USD, GBP USD, NZD USD, USD card, USD CHF, just name them, right? For a normal um, currency pair, right? It's always the fourth or the second to the last number. If you've please gotten that, can you just put uh, 555 on the chat box? If you've understood this short explanation right now, put 555 on the chat box, put 555 on the chat box. This is really, really important that you get this. So I'm going to show us a little exercise to see how many peeps we went. So I said one point, uh, let me clean my screen. 555 on the chat box. So I'm going to take the class a bit slowly so that you all can get it, right? Really important that you get it. Because once you can calculate your peeps, oh my God, you can help a lot, it can help a lot in profit and in knowing the proper risk management to apply. It can really help. It can, I can tell you how much, because for most of you, you only know how much you're going to make if it's HFX. Or for price, you can tell how much you're going to make from a market, how much you want to make from that market. So it's really important that you get it. So now let's assume we want to buy, so listen closely now. So one euro, we want to buy the euros, right? So one euro, we want to buy at, um, Right now, the market says 1.3567, right? We're not paying attention to the fifth number for a peep. We're using the fourth. The fifth, however, is called a pipette or a micro peep. It's called a pipette. This fifth guy here is called a pipette or a micro peep, right? But we're not going to pay attention to that, to that guy. Most times, it's always irrelevant because um, we always f um, take into account just the, the fourth number, which is the peep. Right. So when you want to get, for example, you want to buy euro and if you want to buy euro, then you've got to pay this certain amount of dollars. Right. 
And that's what it means. So let's say you want to come to um, Germany, where, where I'm based, you would need to pay $1.13567 to get one euro. That's what it simply means. Now, going further from that, let's assume that in Germany or in the Schengen region, which that's where euro is mostly spent, right? There is political news or there is economic whatever, and there is an increase, right, in the price of euro. So, for example, euro gains strength. Once euro is able to gain strength based on politics and news and all of that stuff, what will then happen is that the value of that one euro increases in price. So the one euro that you'd have gotten for 1.13567, if euro gains strength based on news, what will happen, is, and by the way, I'm going to have a lecture on news to see how you can trade off news, active news, but it won't be now. So the value of that one euro probably increases and then it becomes maybe three, um, six, six, seven dollars so instead of using instead of using 1.13567 to buy a dollar um, to buy one euro you would have to pay 1.13667 right to actually get one euro because of the change in the value the same thing happens if euro loses strength let's say based on um, politics or the economy and all of that stuff euro loses strength euro, euro loses value what will happen is that that euro will now be going for 1.13 let's assume um 32 right so it will decrease in value and it will be shown on the price it will be shown on the price now back to peep now according to peep in a case where this number now let me change it a bit let's let's take it from baby steps in a case where this number moves from 1.35 Seven seven. This would then be, since we say we're looking at the fourth number, so the fourth number increased from six to seven. In PIP calculation, we say that is one PIP because it only moved from six to seven because we're paying into account only this last number, this fourth number, this fourth digit. That's what we're paying into account. So if it now moves from 1.1357 to one point to maybe 1.13587 it has moved from six to eight that would be two peeps okay if it moves again to nine seven that would be three peeps all right so we have caught three peeps from this market in profit as increase do you understand so now assuming it moved from 1.3567 to 1.13667. Now you see that we're no longer dealing with the sixth, the fourth number, but also the third number. Now let me explain it this way for you guys. Let's do a table. Let me draw a table for you. Let me draw a table for you. Let's do it this way. 1.13. Five, six, seven. So we're not paying into account this one. So let's let it go. So let's draw a table. This is an easier way to understand it. Now, this last number is calculated in ones. The second to the last number is calculated in tens. I will explain. The third to the last is calculated in hundreds because one, two, three, that's three, zero. Um, one, two, this is one. So that means if this number moves from six, the last number moves from six to seven, it's moving in ones. If it moves from six to eight, it's moving in ones. If this number moves the second to the fourth number, so let's say the third number moves from five to four, it's now moving in tens. Do you understand? If this one is the one that moves, so it's now moving in hundreds. Do you get that? So with this formula, you can always easily calculate the difference now, this is what I simply then do. Once you understand this, I hope you're taking a screenshot and you're writing these things down for easy explanation later on. And guys, you will need to go over this over and over and over and over again. I had to go over it multiple times personally to finally get um, an understanding of it. So now let's go over it now with that explanation. So if we have 1.3567, so for purpose of explanation, I won't be making a, um, into account the last number, the pipette. And then it moves to one point one three six six 
guys, how many peeps have, um, did we move in profits? How many peeps did we move in profits? Put it in the chat box. How many peeps did we move in profits? From 1.1356 to 1.1366. I need every single person to answer so that I know, I know if you are understanding, then I know where to start from. So every single one of you put an answer there. Put an answer there. Remember again, like I said, right now you can see it's five, six, so weapon. And then this is the one that has changed, right? This is the one that has changed. Everyone is saying 10 peeps, wonderful. So you do get it, right? So what did we do? I simply minus 50, 66 or 56, whichever you want to use. So I simply minus 56, minus 66. That would give us minus 10, right? So if you want to mathematically do it correctly, you can just do 66 which is the increase minus the previous state gives us what 10. This is the 56, this is the 66 that I'm using. All right, so that's 10, very easy, very simple. So we move 10 pips in profit. We're not taking into account this last guy. So you don't put him in the calculation, very important. Now, let me give you another exercise to really be sure that you've understood pips. Now, let's say we moved in profit to 1.722. Guys, how many pips did we move in profit? How many peeps did we move in profit? How many peeps did we move in profit? Let me see your answers. How many peeps did we move in profit? If we, if the market was at 1.1356, I moved to 1.1722. How many peeps did we move in profit? Okay, okay, I'm waiting for responses. Uh, let me go to the chat box and see what you guys are saying. How many peeps did we move in profit? Someone says um, 376, 3400, 366. Oops, 100, 366. 30. All right, I think majority are going with 366. That's correct. That's correct because the first number is still the same. The second number is still the same. The third number actually has changed. So we now have to do the difference between this three digits minus these three digits. Guys, do you understand that? It's 366. So the difference is equals to 366 peeps in profit. 366. Does that make sense? Remember the, the table that I drew? You have to always use that table to know. So the first number is constant. It didn't change. You can see it's still 1.1 1 .1 point. The second one, it still didn't change. One point. It's still 1.1. 1 .1. The third one has changed from 3 to 7. And then the other two, obviously, has also changed. So you have to subtract. 722 minus 356 and you're immediately able to get your peeps guys if you understood that as in like you seriously understood that could you just put 777 if that was clear enough put 777 this is how you can and the same thing happens for loss right so if it reduces as well let's assume that um there's a problem in the market with euro the economy something is wrong somewhere and the value of euro to dollar reduces um so we could have something like one point be putting your 777 i want every single person on the call to answer so that i'm sure that we're fooling before we move to the next thing really important that you get peeps because the next time i'll exp i will talk about peeps, i'll just be using the word peeps peeps so once i mention it you should be able to know what we're referring to and how to get it really important all right so let's say it reduces in value it can become maybe 1.1 1.1 1. 1, 1. um two for zero. So my students, guys, if the value of euro reduced to 1.1240 in dollars, one, two, four, zero. So remember, I so said we're not paying into, um, taking into account this last guy for now. So what would be the number of peeps in reduction? It went down by how many peeps? Can someone tell? It went down by how many peeps? It went down by how many peeps? Okay, I see someone say 116, 116, the rest of you, 116, 116. All right, guys, you are getting it. Perfect, perfect. So this is how you literally calculate peeps. Now, but when we go to JPY, any currency that has JPY as its quote currency, any currency that has JPY in it, it's a little bit different. When we talk about JPY, it is a little bit different. So now I'm going to open, I'm going to just 
open my MetaTrader and give you a currency pair that has JPY. Or can you guys mention any currency pair for me that has JPY so that we just look at it and then use that to explain this, this peep. So you can, peep is seen from two angles, the normal ones, which is what I've explained being the fourth digit. Then we're gonna look at another one as well so that you understand it perfectly well. This is for the Forex market. I'm not talking about DCX, I'm just talking about Forex right now. All right, we do have DCX meetings too. So when they come, you can use that. Right, so I see AUD JPY. Odd JPY. So let's use odd JPY then. All right, odd JPY. What that simply means, by the way, JPY is the Japanese, the Japanese yen. And right now it says to get one AUD because guys, whenever you were doing this, the first currency would always be one, which is the base. You know, last time we explained base and, and base and quotes currency, right? So this is the base currency. So it's always the base currency against the quotes currency. So it is how much of this can get us one of this? How much of the quotes currency can get us one base currency? Very important. How much of the of the quotes currency can get us one um, base currency, which is AUD? So one AUD, according to MetaTrader 4, says it is 82.678. All right, so 82.678 yen will give us one AUD. So if you have one AUD is equivalent to this amount, right? So when you wanna calculate PEEP for this, what we take into account is the second number after the decimal point. The second number after the decimal point is our PEEP. The eighth number after the decimal, sorry, the third number after the decimal point is our pipette or micro PEEP, all right? The second number is our PEEP. The third number is our pipette. You can also like to look at it at the way I explained the other time. The second to the last number is the peep. So in this case, that still that still stands. So if you use second to the last number as peep, it will always be easier. So you count. You start counting from the second, you know, forward, right? From the second forward, you start counting from the second forward when you're calculating the difference in peep, right? For AUD JPY, for Euro USD, you start counting from the fourth forward to calculate the difference okay um and you can also look at it as the second to the last number for jpy um, pairs with jpy and for every other pair second to the last number so it's the same thing that happens here if we want to check the difference let's say um australian dollar increases in strength right based on different factors maybe people are getting involved in it so much uh what will then happen is this this um japanese so this AUD that was going for 82.678 yen probably is now going for 82.698. Guys, how many peeps has this moved by? How many peeps? How many peeps? How many peeps was that for? It moved from 82.678 to 82.698. How many peeps was that? How many peeps? How many peeps? How many peeps? How many peeps? Most of you are wrong. I'm waiting for the correct person. Most of you are wrong. I don't know why you are saying 20. Yeah, now you are saying the right thing. Two. Why 20? Why 20? 69. 69. Oh, where's my stuff? Um, all right. 69 minus 67. It's two. It's two. Where did you get 20 from? 69 minus 67 is two, not 20. Okay, you're not adding this. This number is not part. This number is not part. And neither should you add a zero to it. I'll, I'll take one more example to be sure that you guys are following. So let's take a decrease. Let's say AUD lost strength. And so now it is going for 82.6. Six, eight. How many peeps has it gone by? How many peeps did it reduce? How many peeps? 82.668. How many peeps? All right, I see answers. One peep, one. It's the same set of people that answered it correctly, that answer, answering it right now correctly. The rest of you, what do you think? Is it one peep? All right, I see ones, one, 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 one. Perfect. So guys, do you fully understand this? Because now I'm about to move to the next thing. Do you fully understand if, you, if you've understood it thus far, everything clear, let me see some nines. 
If you've understood thus far, let me see some nines. We're about to go to the next subtopic under this and we'll still relate it back to peep. If you've understood thus far, let me see some nines. So I'm going to wipe this off now. I hope you took notes of that. Very, very important. I hope you took notes of that. Now we want to talk about, I want to see nines. Keep, keep putting your nines, keep putting your nines. Why? I clean my screen. Keep putting your nines, keep putting your nines. You've understood thus far. Let me see some nines. Let me see some nines. It's not so difficult. It's it's just practice. Keep keep um the moment you keep um keep doing the exercise. All right, nice. The next thing I want to talk about is this wonderful guy here called leverage leverage what is leverage let me ask you guys what is leverage what is leverage what is leverage what what are you understanding what is your understanding of leverage when we talk about leverage what does it mean just give me ideas what, what comes to mind oh, and what are the different types of leverage that you do know so either of these two you can answer, and then I'll explain it briefly. Either of these two you can answer, then I'll explain it briefly. What's leverage and what are the different kinds of leverage that we do have in the Forex market? What are the different types of leverage you've seen? I'm sure you've heard the word before. If you've heard the word leverage before, please put one, one, one. If you've heard that word leverage, leverage, leverage. You know, sometimes people talk about leverage, they look at leverage from a very negative perspective. Oh, your leverage is this, your leverage cannot be this. I remember <laughs> a funny joke, guys. I remember when I, when I first started trading, so um, I was trying to open cut 4X, right? I was trying to quit my, my account. So, and then I met someone, I was trying to, to get like directions from the person. And the person was like, what's your leverage size? Uh, why would you use this kind of leverage? I know, do you want to blow your accounts? Come and change your leverage size. You must use a small leverage size. And I was like, why? So I, I was that day, I immediately ran to cut four and changed my leverage size because then it was one is to 500. So I had to change it to one is to 50 immediately. I was so, I was really in panic because I was trading with my life account. So I was so much in panic. But Trust me now that there's a huge difference. If you, I won't, I won't act that way tomorrow. <laughs> well, usually when people talk about leverage, there's always this panic, but I'm going to simplify it and also let you understand the pros and the cons, where leverage really comes in, how you can use leverage to your advantage, whether it's a one to 500 or a one to 50, how you can practically use it to your advantage. So yeah, um, I see no one has given me the definition or an explanation for leverage. So I assume that you guys do not know. So I will just explain um, is the use of both funds. So yeah, that, that's a layman understanding and that's perfect. So great. So that, that's actually the same platform to look at it. Borrowed money, borrowed fund. Yes. So when we talk about leverage, we're talking about another word you can look at it from is what we call the buying power. The buying, I like to look at it from this angle, the buying power what you have the power to buy, what you have the power to buy. Now let's go back to our example of Euro USD, something practical as well, Euro USD. And then we said one Euro was equivalent to one point, um, let's say 1.1657, right? Let's say that was the case. Now, in the Forex market, we're not literally trading just one euro. I mean, we are dealing with this in multiple units, in multiple number, right? So no one is trading one euro, do you understand? So let's say now we want to do actual trade, physical trade, and you want to buy like um, 10,000 units of this euros. You want to buy 10,000, not just one, you want to buy 10,000. So you need 10,000 euros. Guys, how much would this, 10,000 euros what in, in dollar? How much would you have to give in dollars for this, your 10,000 euros? Can someone tell me the maths? So now I'm going to go into a bit of mathematics in this. So please really pay close attention. So that's why I'm taking my time deliberately giving you step by step. So follow closely, please follow closely. No, no distraction at all. If you miss this, you, you, you would have huge problems, okay, in your trades. So follow this closely. If I want to get 10,000 euros, you know, what's of euros, how much will I need to pay in dollars to get this amount of, of euros? Guys, tell me, 
How much will I need to pay in dollars? Uh, let me see. Do we have responses? All right. I see 10,000, 10,000, not 1,000, 10,000. So I see um, 11 years, actually. So we need to pay 11,000, 11,657 dollars, right? If we want to trade 10,000, um, if you want to get 10,000 units of this year, let's say we want to get 100,000, 100,000 of this year. How much would we need in dollars, guys? How much would we need in dollars? How much would we need in dollars? How much would we need in dollars to get that sorted? Okay. Has anyone responded? How much would we need in dollars? Yes, correct. 11,000. Um, 116,000 rather, 570. Now, practically speaking, do you guys have this physical cash? Do you have, do you have 11,000, well, I'm not 11, I keep saying like, do you guys have $116,570 in your account right now? If you do, let me know. <laughs> do you practically have this amount in your account? If you do, if you have this amount, put one, one, one. If you don't have the amount, put two, two, two. If you are waiting on God for it, choose this forex, put three, three, three. <laughs> if you have this amount in your account, put one, one, one. If you don't have it, put two, three. If you are waiting on forex to get it, put three, three, three. I still have threes. That would be your portion in Jesus' name. We would all get it. We are. We will get part of the six point six trillion dollars. Definitely perfect. So now, what? This is where leverage comes in. As much as you don't have this amount of money right now in your account, you can still have power and trade this amount of euro with the power of what we call leverage. So leverage simply means that what you couldn't get, right, with um, your small amount, this leverage means that you're able to get it, that same huge quantity that you couldn't get, you probably didn't have 100 thousand years with leverage you're able to still get it with a very small amount of money that you do have so if it's hundred dollars that you've got leverage says bring your hundred dollars and i'll give you hundred thousand euros it's not as simple as that but it's basic as that do you understand so how does that happen we've got brokers so what these brokers do is they loan you this money to trade so you might not have hundred thousand years and the book is like, okay, I know you don't have hundred thousand years in your account, but here's how we do it. Give me this certain amount of percentage. Give me a certain amount of money. And then I will give you hundred thousand euros to trade digitally. And so you will now trade as though you have hundred thousand euros in your account and not hundred dollars. All right. So that's leverage guys. If you understood that, just put two to two. So now based on that, I'm waiting for you to. So based on that, right, we've got different leverage um we've got different leverages that are out there right we've got um for example we have one is to okay let's say one is to 20 as one is to 50 i'll explain that for you i'm still waiting for your twos okay i'm seeing them one is to 50 we have one is to 200 one is to 500 in fact today i even saw one is to 1000 like my god so you have even up to one is to 1000 I heard that in the States, what is the highest you can go or the highest a broker can give to you is one is to 50, right? So what this simply means, right? When we, these are the different leverage sizes that are available. What this simply means is that the broker says that for every $1 you've got, I will give you $1,000. $1, so whatever currency you're trading, if you're trading in dollars, most of us do trade in dollars, right? So for every $1 you've got, those who are saying they don't understand, you get it right now. For every $1 that you've got, I will give you $1,000. You just look at it as borrowing funds. Look at it as borrowing funds. You don't have money, you want to borrow. And for you to borrow, they say, okay, you need to drop something to get something, right? So um, just like when you want to go and collect money from the bank and then they say you probably have to use your house, you know? Uh, so yes, yeah, so for every $100, you get $1,000. For every $1, you get $50. For every $1, you get $500. This is what these different leverage sizes are saying. For every $1, you get $200, right? So the broker is the one that gives you this $200, but he takes this $100, this $1 from you. The broker gives you this $20, but he takes this $1 from you, all right? So this is the simple way to understand the different um, um, types of leverage that we do have. However, there are pros and cons to these things, right? So I will explain the pros and cons real quick. Now, 
understanding these different leverage sizes, right? So let me use, let me take one for example. Let's use one is to 500. It means that when you bring $1, the broker will give you $500. Broker takes your $1 and gives you $500. Now let's assume that what you have is $100. What would be the $500 form or the $500 what? If it's one is to 500, what will that exchange to? That will be $100 is to what? Do the simple math. Do the simple math. Do the simple math. So it's it's very simple. All you just have to do is just do um, 100 times 500. Because if one is to 500, then 100 will give us 50,000, right? So you have the buying power of 50,000 in the market with your hundred dollars. So sometimes you see that you're not able to place some trades because your buying power is not up to maybe 50,000 or maybe it's not up to 100,000. So the more or the less leverage size you use gives you more or less uh, buying power over this market you get. So let's imagine that I, I probably am, am, am funding with $1,000. I'm using a leverage size of 500. It means that my buying power with this 1,000 if the broker is giving me one is to 500, that will simply mean 500 multiplied by 1,000. That gives us 500,000. So we have a buying power of 500,000. So it means we can get, we, we literally, what it means is that you have 500,000, you know, dollars. That's what it means. You, you've got $500,000. However, this $500,000 is not yours. It belongs to the broker. Yours is this $1,000. But then that's what it, that, that's the whole idea of leverage. You're not using your money, practically. You're using um, a broker's money. Right, so you're using just a fraction of your money and leveraging off what the broker has to give. So, guys, if you've understood that, just put three, three, three. Another example, another way to look at it is buying a house. Most people like using this example, but well, so let's say you want to buy a house. So we want to look at how this now reflects in the forex market, right? Let's say you want to buy a house, and this house costs about, say, um, this is how to draw a house. Let's see. <laughs> Like, you know, it has, it needs to have all this, yes. So yeah, so let's say this house costs about um, uh, uh, 500,000, 500,000. So guys, it's the same thing that happens with every other different leverage sizes that you use, okay? So the profit you get from the leverage, is it yours or the, so we'll get to that, just a minute. So let's say you have, um, this house goes for 500,000 and then the agency tells you that, okay, this house will go for 500,000, but what I would do is, um bring maybe you've got one thousand to so bring your one thousand dollars if we're doing a leverage size of one is to five hundred this example applies if we're doing a leverage size of one is to fifty this example cannot apply because your one is to fifty cannot fetch you five hundred thousand i hope you get that so one is to five hundred and then the, the agent says bring your one thousand dollars and i will give you this house that has a value of five hundred thousand dollars so with your one thousand dollars, I'll give you this house that has a five hundred thousand um, dollars value. Keep the house for a year if you want, right? But it is yours. That's what it says. Now, what then happens? And then the guy says that in any case, after one year of you keeping this house, after a period of one year of you keeping this house, if this house increase in value, right, and you decide to sell this house or you decide to do anything with this house, right, you raise this amount by selling the same house back. Right, um, whatever difference that is made in the sale of the house becomes yours. So you will still give me my five hundred thousand dollars, but you will keep the profit, and I would also keep your one thousand dollars. That's what that's what the leverage is saying. All right, and then it says again. However, if this house, so let's say the house increased in value from five hundred thousand, probably after like a year, this house now goes for six hundred thousand. You know the way land used to increase. Uh -huh. So the same math you apply here. So this house that was initially for 500, if anyone wants to get a house like this, it goes for 600,000. If you sell this house at that time, after a year, you'll be selling at the rate of 600,000. How much would you have made a 100,000 bucks from this? You didn't have any money. All you had was 1,000. However, you kept a house of 500,000. And later on, you sold that same house after a year and you sold it for 600,000. So from your 1,000, you were able to make three hundred thousand dollars that you didn't have because you have to pay the broker back regardless that makes sense right now the same thing happens if you lose or if the if, if the the house reduces in price if the house reduces in price from five hundred thousand maybe after a year it has lost value 
and it's now being sold for 400,000. And the, the agreement was you have to keep the house for just a year. Now, after a year, it's sold for 400,000. So if you sell this house right now that it's sold for 400,000 because you are scared that it might still fall down in price, if you sell it for 400,000, you have made a loss of 100,000 dollars plus your one thousand dollars because regardless of whether you profit in that transaction or you lose in that transaction you've got to pay the broker back what um, belongs to the broker do you understand so that being said it simply tells you that sometimes people tell you oh don't use a huge um trading um, leverage size is because it is the same way you can easily make profits it's the same way you can easily lose profits or uh, yeah lose your profit or your money Right. I'm going to explain that further when I am explaining lot size. But if this is basic enough and if you understood this thus far, please put um, 888 on the chat box. If this is basic enough and you've understood this leverage and what it gives you, like I said, it's buying power. Money you don't have, you're able to access it with the broker's money in, in a nutshell. Money you don't have, you're able to access it with the broker's money. So it is always wise to use a good leverage site. However, I'm going to explain something that is a bit different from what some of you know, and that's because it has worked and it makes a lot of sense. So when people tell you, oh, don't use a huge leverage site, don't listen to them. It's all about being able to manage your risks. If you can understand risk management in terms of lot size and units, then whether you're using a 1 to 500 or a 1 to 1,000 or a 1 to 50, it doesn't matter. Because you have the power to use whatever you want to use. If out of one is to 500 and you decide to use, you have a uh, power of 500,000 and you decide to use just 200,000 out of your 500,000, you're still smart. So what, what, what leverage helps you to do is to, okay, I would explain something, but let me explain a lot size so that you're not confused. So yeah, I see a lot of eights. Perfect. So let's explain the last guy. And then we would, um, we would, I will show you some practical things and then we take questions. So this lot size would be the, the it will be the ice on the cake. You will not perfectly understand how it all comes together. Peeps, leverage, and lot size. And so please pay attention. And I'll do some maths in between as well. Lots, um, lot sizes, lot sizes, okay? L-O-T sizes. Now, there are three types of lot sizes that most of you do know. Right, so we have what we call the micro lot size, the mini lot size, and the standard lot size. And so, someone says that the micro lot size is 0 0.01, the mini lot size is 0 0.1, and the standard lot size is one. I'm sure you all agree with that. Now, this is our different lot sizes. I mean, it, it goes more than that. You could have a lot size of 10, you could have a lot size of 20, you could have a lot size of 5, you could have a lot size of 3. I mean, you can have any lot size practically, but it will definitely fall under one of these three categories. If you have a lot size of 10, then obviously it's above 1, so it can fall under this because that's the that's the range that we do have. If you have a lot size of, of let's say, 0 0.5, a lot size of 0 0.5, it will fall under this category of mini lot sizes. All right, so it's, it's it's the same. Now, what is interesting about this lot size here is that each of these lot sizes have units. And most times when we deal with trade, you don't pay attention to the units, but that's where you can you are able to apply your risks properly. With how much units of a particular currency pair can my lot size fetch? I repeat, how much units of a particular currency pair can my lot size fetch? Now, if you have a lot size that falls under the micro range, which is 0 0.01, it says that you can get up to 1,000 units of any currency. Remember when we we're doing Euro USD and we're like, we want to get 10,000 units of euros. We need to get a certain amount of USD to get that amount of euros. Yes. So this guy is saying that if you use a lot size of 0 0.01, you can only get a maximum of 1,000 units of euros. You can't get more than that. So if you want to purchase 5,000 euros, you need to get much more lot size. You can't use this for more than that. Do you understand? Now, for a mini lot size of 0 0.1, it says the maximum you can purchase is 10,000 units of that item or that currency. For a standard lot size of one, it says the maximum unit you can purchase is 100,000 units of that, um, of that particular currency, all right? I hope this makes sense. This is a formula. You need to have that formula upstairs. I, I do the calculation every now and then. If I want to take a trade, I'm doing the calculation immediately. Sometimes people, when you see this, you say, oh, it's a lot of math. Well, you, you need to give something to get something, right? So you need to understand this and 
put it upstairs, let it be there every now and then when you're about to place a trade, you need to do this very little calculation. So now this is the basics. 0 0.01 equals to 1,000, 0 0.1 equals to 10,000, 1 equals to 100,000. So let's give an example, right? I'm still on the basics, guys. If, for example, we're using a lot size of, and by the way, in case you don't know what lot sizes are, because I believe everyone knows what the lot size is, let me just ask, what's the lot size? You can just put it on the chat box. Everyone should know what lot size is. Um, it's the, let me just tell you, it's the amount of um, of a particular currency you want to trade, the units of a particular currency you want to trade. That's what a lot size is. It tells you the volume, okay, the volume of that currency. So it's for those of you that are on HFX, when you say, okay, how much amount you want to trade with you, some of you are saying ten dollars, twenty dollars. So it's something like that in this in this case, okay. So you have a lot size of zero point zero. So if you have a lot size of zero point zero five. Guys, how much units of a particular currency, Euro USD, for example, can you get? How much units of euros? Because remember, when I when, when we are buying currencies, we're trying to buy the first one. Right. So we're saying when you say euro USD, we're trying to buy euro. So we're selling dollars to get euro. Whosoever that is stronger will determine the direction of the market. That's the basic knowledge of forex. Okay. Someone says five thousand. Perfect. I think we're following. Let's do another one. If you want to get 20, 20. Um, if we're using a lot size of 20, how much um, units would we with that 20 fetches? How much units would that 20 fetches? Let me see your responses. Now I'm going to, we're still on basics. I'm about to enter some, some very complex things now. So guys, I hope you've gotten all the things I've said to us first so that you not tell me you are lost in between. Okay. Someone says um, 20,000. No, it's not 20,000. You just multiply this 20 by 100. It's simple. So 200,000, all right, perfect, nice. Okay, great. Now, if you've gotten that, when you now want to check how many, how much profits can you make in the markets? I want to combine everything now that I've taught into a practical form and you see how you want to make money. I hope you guys wrote this down so that you can refer to it because maybe you might not be able to grab everything at once. Um, but you need to be able to refer to it. So I'm going to now do something. If you want to calculate in profits what you can make, right, from a trade, it's very simple. Remember, I've talked about lot size. I'll just write the keywords there, lot size, leverage, and peeps. I'm going to combine these three. How you can calculate your profits and your loss, and then how you can mitigates your your rigs that's what we're going to deal with now that's the topic we're on, on right now so look at this formula very well okay so let's assume that we have just hundred dollars most of you like to fund with hundred dollars i used to tell people that if you want to trade forex you need money and you will see it here that you actually need money you actually need money so that's why most times we push people to hfx or we advise people rather to go for hfx because with that you can trade your hundred dollars and get something really really meaningful for in forex you need mad money your $100 is nothing in the Forex market. It is absolutely nothing. What you need is, for, if you want to really, really trade Forex, you should start from $1,000. Then you will see mad profits and you'll be happy. You, you'll actually be happy. You're like, ah, now I'm trading. So go and ask those people that are having mad profits in their accounts and ask them how much they funded their accounts with. Ask them, they will tell you. But I don't advise you to start, you know, use your demo. That's why you see your demo. You can use any amount you want. Practice first with your demo. And once you've gotten the hand of things, then I'm sure you'll be bold enough to go and carry $1,000 and put in your Forex account. And it's advisable. You'll see, for instance, so I'll do the math for you. you see. you see what your, your $100 is fetching you. So let's say you have $100. Let's use that because everyone likes to start with $100, right? And then you're using the leverage size of 1 is to 50 because that's the one they used to tell everybody to use. I don't always use 1 is to 50. I'll tell you why. I've not told you why, right? So I'll tell you why. So let's say that you use a normal leverage size of one is to 50. What that simply means that your hundred dollars has a buying power of what? 500 units, true or false? Um, 5,000 units, true or false? Right or right? Right or right, guys? You just simply do hundred times 50 gives you 5,000. So as simple as that. So yes, correct, good. So you have a buying power of what, 5,000. Now with this buying power of 5,000, they call it a trade idea, Evo USD, I like Evo USD, so popular. Evo USD, going for a buy, 
So we want to buy the euro against the dollar. So we're selling dollar and buying euro. That's what it means. So now we're entering the market. And so we're now like, what lot size should we use? What's, you cannot be asking what lot size should you use because the maximum you can use is 500 units. Guys, what lot size equates to 500 units? I remember I explained the different um, lot sizes and their units. What lot size equates to 500, 5,000 units rather? What lot size equates to 5,000 units? Somebody tell me, what lot size? What lot size, what lot size? You can remember the, the this thing. 0 0.1, that's wrong. What, what lot size? Micro, yes, it's micro. 0 0.5, that's also wrong. I'm waiting for someone to get the actual one. Yeah, you're on micro 0 0.01, but for 5,000 units, what lot size do you need? Finally, someone has gotten 0 0.05, exactly. I will need a lot size of 0 0.05. So that simply means if I take any trade, and I use a lot size. If you try to use a lot size of 0 0.05, it will not work. The broker will tell you no enough fund. <laughs> you know, you know enough fund in your, in your account, so it definitely will not work. If you use a lot size of 0 0.05, what it simply means is that you are depositing all of your $100 on that trade. Guys, follow me closely. Follow me really closely. If you use a lot size of 0 0.05, because 0 0.05 equates to 5,000 units, and this 5,000 units, the broker has taken your $100 to give you 5,000. Because anytime you get into a trade, right, the broker would always and always and always take a certain amount from you. It's called your deposit. It is called your what? Your deposit. So for this 5,000 units, if you enter a trade with 0 0.05, if you enter a trade with 0 0.05 as your um, lot size, what would then happen is that the broker has taken the entire hundred dollars from your account if you are wondering how is that so is it even possible is a lie it's not true and all of that it's very simple all you need to check is your um, um your free margin all you need to check is your free margin with that you'll be able to see that ah truly the broker has taken your money right so he's it's going to the broker is going to hold that money pending what happens with the trade so if the trade goes in your favor you make your hundred dollars plus some other things. If the trade goes in your favor, it will start reducing. So your hundred dollars that the broker has taken, so it's like, this is like deposit money. So your hundred dollars the, the, the broker has taken will start reducing, depending on how many pips it reduces in. I'll give you something practical. It might be a lot to handle at once, but let me give you something practical. So let's continue. Your 0 0.05, you enter that trade with 0 0.05 lot size, that's 5,000. So you have given hundred dollars to the broker. Now, what happens now is PIP, we're not start doing PIP calculation. We've done leverage, we've done lot size, PIP calculation comes into play. But mind you, the broker is holding your $100 in case something goes wrong. So I will take everything on. This one trade, only one trade, you can't place another trade because you have used all of your money. Now, the broker now says that, or the market now says that this euro to dollar, that was for 1.1345, probably now drops in PIPs and goes to 1.12. 100. Guys, how many pips have you lost? How many pips have you lost? You remember the calculation we did? Just do 34 minus, oh, uh, sorry, 345, rather, 345 minus 200. That gives us 145. So you have lost 145. Now, this 145 pips, how do we calculate it in dollars? It's very simple. Your lot size, whatever lot size you use, so my, my pen just fell. Whatever lot size you use, 0 0.05, multiply it by 10. It will tell you how much you are making or losing per peep. Multiply your lot size by 10. It will give you the equivalent in dollars per peep. So 0 0.05, 0 0.05 times 10 gives us 0 0.5. So for this particular trade, we would either um, make or lose Right, 0 0.50. So we're making in, we're making um profit in cents or losing in cents, 50 cents. Right. So let's assume we lost 145, right? So that will be 0 0.5 times 145. That will be 0 0.5 times we went down by 145 pips times 145. So please, you can go back to the video. It's, it might be, there are still some more complex things I'm about to say. So if this is already getting complex, no problem. Just follow through, listen to the video, watch the video over and over and over again, and you, you'll be able to understand things. So that means you have, from this um, 
If the market goes down by 145, what happens is that you'll be losing a whole $72.5 on this particular one trade. That is not wise at all. That is a, a good way to blow your account on just one trade, on just one trade. So now guys, two things. When you want to take a trade, you want to be able to calculate the difference between when you're taking a trade from levels. You want to be able to calculate the difference between the entry point. You want to calculate the, 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 the pips, right? The difference in pips between the entry point and the stop loss. And the stop loss. You want to calculate how many pips and see whether it is worth risking. Because if you calculate the difference and you are calculating like uh, maybe 100 pips, then you might want to change the lot size that you're using to enter the account. So that, because you advise all the time to only try and lose 3%. When you enter a trade, you should be ready to lose only 3% of what your account is. 72.5 is how many percent? That's way more than, because when you say 3% of, um three percent of your account let's assume that your account is actually hundred dollars right so that would be 0 0.03 times hundred three percent ideally is just three dollars three dollars that is that is proper risk management so regardless of your stop loss is either you do one of two things either you move your stop loss a bit further right closer to your entry some people don't like to do that. Well, get a larger account, get a bigger account if you don't like to do that. Because it's either you do that or what you do is you have to do what someone says, coach, why multiply by 10? I'm coming. Is that you do that or you have to um or you have to change your lot size so that you're not using all of the money in your account? Because another thing the broker too will do is that you will not even wait for this money to reach hundred dollars, this five thousand. Once it's already closed, they'll even send you warning. Something like your margin, something, something, something. The trade will soon take you off, all those kind of things. It's because they're trying to tell you that you're about to blow your account and you will not, like, they don't blow your account, blow, 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 right? Probably your account will not be left to, let's say, $5 or something like that, right? Because the broker does not want to lose all of his 5,000 um, units or $5,000, whether that's given to you either. So, in being smart, once it's almost reaching that you're already losing in, um, in loss, it gives you that warning so that the broker as well doesn't lose all of their five thousand dollars. Do you get so it will keep small change for you so that they can also keep some, some some money out of it. But then what you always advise you to do is just um try to lose only three percent. Then you can win as much percentage as you want. You can take TP1, TP2, TP3, to the kingdom come, whichever that plays out for you. But it's always advisable to only work with three percent. Now, putting that into practical terms. What is my 3% of the account of $100? My 3% is $3, right? How can I know how many pips the market has to go, either in profit or in loss, to fetch me $3? How can I know how many pips the market has to go to fetch me the $3 in loss? So that I know where to place my stop loss. If I only want to lose $3, remember I said is that you change your lot size. So you probably can start changing your lot size to see what would then suit you, right? Or you do what you change your stop loss. Now, in order for you to change your stop loss, in order for you to change your stop loss is very simple. Now, what you first need to do, if we have a lot size of, okay, we're using 0 0.05, right? What you now have to do is, let me use my pen. So $3, that's what you're trying to lose, divided by your lot size. Your lot size is 0 0.05 times 10 will give us the amount, total amount in pips. Total amount, amount, not S, in pips. What does that mean? Let me show you. Let's do the calculation. So $3 divided by, divided by the lot size. So let's say our lot size 0 0.05. So that's $3, let me use my pen, $3 divided by 0 0.05 times 10, would give us 0 0.5. So we now do three divided by 0 0.5 gives us six. 
gives us six. So we need to go down the market by six pips. If this market goes down by six pips, it has already hit our, um, our target, our stop target for the dip, which is 3%. Are you guys following? So that means if I have a, a, a an entry point of 1.1345, then I need to calculate just three, six pips from here, which ideally would be 1.140, um, 1.140, maybe five, something of this nature. Oh no, it's supposed to be a loss, not a profit. So let's go down. So that'll be, 1.1 1. 1. guys are you following guys if you're following let me know if you're following please put uh let me take a pause and be sure that you guys are following if you're following please put 555 if you're following please put 555 i'll be waiting for that so let's say 1.345 we're trying to go by um six people so 1.12 1.128 1. 1, 1. maybe zero 1.1280 0. so that means my stop loss will be 1.1280. Okay, 1.1280. This is how I can determine how much I want to lose. So I can place my trade and go and sleep because I know that if this trade doesn't play out, the best, the highest I will lose is three dollars. Three dollars out of my whole hundred dollars. Are you seeing only three dollars? It makes a lot of sense. But now the problem is this trade six pips is not enough range for the market because the market likes to do what it likes to do which is what the buyers trying to buy and the sellers trying to sell so there's always going to be a pushback remember what i explained in the last class that you will never see a market just going in one direction just like that uptrend just like that we've seen all the blue candles just like no there would always be a pushback the sellers has got to show that they are still in the market they are alive do you understand so it is very possible that your entry your your trade idea or that trade will hit stop loss very fast. In fact, within 10 minutes, that hit stop loss. Within one hour, that's it. So you will always be in loss, actually. You'll be losing six, six, um, three, three dollars every single day. Three dollars, three dollars, three. So it is not wise. But you have to do it that way if you want to work with hundred dollars. So now you see why your hundred dollars doesn't do anything for the market, it doesn't go anywhere. Now imagine if we convert that hundred dollars to one thousand dollars. Right, it was one thousand dollars that we we used for our trade. It simply means that everything will change. So our third, our three dollars becomes thirty dollars. Then our um this thing thirty dollars will now be thirty divided by what zero point five. Let's see how many pips we can go with that. Let's see how many pips we can go. Someone do the maths and tell me how many pips can you go with um thirty thirty dollars? How many pips in loss? You will get something like for those who are doing sixty. Perfect. People are following. 60 pips 60 pips when you think the market will hit the market will take a very long time to hit six do you know what 60 pips is it's going to check all your level straight and calculate the difference it's more up to 60. most of them are 20 something pips it's stop loss they said stop loss within 20 something pips 30 something pips 40 but 60 pips is a lot you won't see it go and check between entry points and stop loss go and calculate it i'm giving you that challenge going because i do check this things almost all the time check it so before your decision will hit stop loss, it will take a very long time. So you are risking just thirty dollars from your one thousand. You can play, you can leave your phone, and you're not you're not scared. Oh, what's happening in my trade? Because you have set the ideal stop loss that you want to work with. You can as well do the same thing for take profit. All right. So this is basically how you're able to manage your risks. That's why I say again, in forex, you need money. Your hundred dollars does not do anything. It only what what will happen is that you'll be making very small wins but big losses. I repeat, if you are using hundred dollars, you will make small wins but very big losses. Your losses will be pronounced, but your wins will be very small. But the reverse happens if you apply same proper risk management. Those who blow their one thousand is because they are trying to put a stop loss that will take up to like one thousand dollars. They are not wise in their in their in their trade. But if you apply the same risk management for a big account, you'll be making small losses but big wins. Small losses but big wins because you're applying proper risk management. There's no how you blow your account if you're using 3% loss and you've calculated your pips and your stop loss to this point. No, the best you will lose in that trade is $30. But you can win times two, times three, times four, times five of that amount. Now, let me mention something real quick to explain further. When we now talk about leverage, why people say at times that leverage is not good, this, that, prr. let me explain that quickly. You know, we're using one is to 50 for all this. 
Imagine if it was one is to 500, my God. Imagine if you're using a leverage size of one is to 500. It means that my $1,000, let's try with $100 first. And then we try with 1,000. And then we see, and then I take questions. One is to 500, that means that your $100 is giving you a buying power, right? Your $100 is giving you a buying power of how much, guys? 50,000. Nice, you guys are fooling. Of 50,000, right? That's what your hundred dollars with a with a you know, of, of one is to five hundred. So that means you, your highest amount you can spend in that market is fifty thousand. Now you want to go in for a trade. You put a lot. That's why some people like using a lot size of 0 0.01, 0 0.04. Those lot sizes are too small. Sorry, those lot sizes are too small for me personally. So let's see, you're using a lot size of. I mean, you will need to go many pips, you know, in, in profit to actually make huge profit from those kind of lot sizes, right? So um, let's say you're using a lot size of 0 0.05, as, as we said before, right? 0 0.05. Now, your 0 0.05 is equal one trade. What would your 0 0.05 equate to? We said it before, 5,000. So that means from this 50,000, you're only spending 5,000. So you have more than enough money to play with. Are you guys seeing? You have more than so you can now take multiple trades on 0 0.05. You can even take up to four. So when I when I scalp, I'll I'll I'll, I'll do a trading on scalping because I love to scalp on forex. When I scalp, the the idea of taking multiple trades is my blessing. Oh my god, the idea of taking multiple trades on just just one pair, one currency pair, take it five times. You are very sure of the idea. Take it five times, you'll be singing another new song. You'll be so happy because every if you're just using take profit, take profit one, everything will play. And once it plays out, what you would have gotten for one, you're getting it in four places. But you cannot do it if you don't have a good leverage size. So this is what leverage helps us to do. It helps us to take multiple trades. Instead of just one trade, we're able to take multiple trades because now we have the buying power of 50,000 and we're only using a lot size of 0 0.05. So I can do 5,000 here, 5,000 here, another 5,000, and another 5,000. I have to do what? 5, 10, 15, 20,000. I have still not used the whole 50,000. So I can still take more and more and more trades. So sometimes when you're asking, oh, why can't I take more trades? It's your, it's your leverage size and your, uh, what's it called? And your capital, right? For some of you might be saying, okay, if I have a, um, what's it called? A leverage size of one to 500, then let me use my $100 and trade and make um, profit with just the $100. The clause is this. The same way you can make money, this five thousand that has been given to you. So now let's calculate from this five thousand dollars. I want to ask you guys a question, mathematicians in the house. From this five thousand dollars that you're using zero point zero five, right? They give you a buying power of five thousand. How much dollars is taken from your account as deposit? Can you do the calculation for me? How much dollars is taken from your account as deposit? Can somebody help with that? How much dollars is taken from your account as deposit? Ah, I see that John, you're a mathematician. Perfect. Can you tell people how you did the calculation? Just put it up there. Ten dollars. Ten dollars is taken from your account. So you are depositing ten dollars. So out of your hundred, the broker will just carry your ten dollars and keep one side, right? You just hold it one side. When you take another trade to so the second trade, you will keep another ten dollars. Then that you keep another ten dollars. You keep giving ten dollars. So you are risking. 10 10 dollars from each of this right you're raising 10 it's very simple you just divide 50,000 by 5,000 to get um, how much is taken from from your hundred dollars right so once you divide this by this you're able to get how much is this by this you're able to get how much is taken from your um, hundred dollars so with this you get 10 so ten dollars is taken from your hundred dollars now imagine if we're using a much bigger lot size right um Let's say we're using a lot size of. Let's say we're using a lot size. By the way, we're not, we're not, we're not calculating the dollars range. Anytime you want to calculate the, the dollars equivalent, right? You want to multiply it by by ten. Your lot size by ten. So let's say we're using um, uh, what's it called? Let's say we're using, let's say we're using five, a lot size of five. A lot size of five simply means what? Five hundred thousand. 500,000 and the broker is giving you one is to 500 and you have $100.
this your hundred dollars we said was translating to what? Five hundred thousand. So that means if you are doing with a lot size of five, that it means you can only trade only one times with a lot size of the lot size of five. You guys get it. it? Means you can only trade one time with a lot size of five. Sorry, this is not. This is one. This is this is wrong. It's not five hundred thousand. It's fifty thousand. I was wondering how is that, how come my hundred this thing give me that much? So this is fifty thousand. This is fifty thousand. I hope it was fifty thousand we did in the last one. By the way, the last example. I hope it was fifty thousand. I hope it was fifty thousand we did in the last example. So now, so my lot size of five simply means that I'm trying to buy five thousand units. If you try and place a trade, it will not work because the max that the the broker is giving to you is fifty thousand because you're bringing hundred. Dollars, so your hundred dollars is fetching you fifty thousand units. So, well, if the reverse was the case, let's say it was five thousand. So, if we had five thousand, so that would be five hundred times one thousand to tell us how much units we have. So, in that case, it becomes five hundred thousand units. We have access to five hundred thousand units. So, with this, that simply means we can only place one trade with five five lot sides. With a lot size of five. Once you place one trade with a lot size of five, I mean you are putting your whole one thousand dollars at risk on just one trade, which as well is not wise. All right. But how? So now, if you're asking, how then can I use a proper risk management with a good leverage size and still make huge profits from the market? This is how I do my own stuff. How I do my own stuff, Adora. So, what I do is, I'm, I sometimes it depends. I sometimes trade with a lot size of I sometimes trade with a lot size of one is to 200 or one is to 500 because HFX has taught me how to be disciplined so when I trade I don't trade like um, amateur I trade a lot of discipline because I've always explained to people that the market doesn't care about your emotions most people lose because they are putting sentiments it is it is like when you go and do your career work whether you had a bad day or a good day, your boss expects you to deliver regardless. If responsibility has been given to you, they expect you to deliver. It's the same thing with the Forex market. The Forex market doesn't care whether you need 500K, 1,000 Naira urgently, or you need $100. It doesn't really care what you've got to do, you've got to do. So if the analysis is not correct, the risk is not correct, because there are two things that make you a good trader. Not just your ability to analyze, but your ability to apply proper risk management, proper ones. That's what makes you outstanding. Right. So once you're able to do that, then you will see results. If you don't do both, you do one, you won't see results. You will blow accounts instead. Right. So now with this, because we have many greedy traders, very many, you risk all of your money on one trade, thinking that it will play out. That's gambling. That's actually what we call gambling. But we are traders, so we don't gamble. Um, let, so I use one is to 200, and I use one is to 500. And I have a capital of a thousand. So 1,000, 1,005, 2,000, um, 2, like that, like that. But my minimum is always 1,000, right? So with this 1,000, when I want to enter a trade, remember I said 3% um, loss, right? So we're going to calculate what is 3% of 1,000. So let's assume I'm using 1,000, a trade size of 1,000, which isn't the case right now. But let's assume it's 1,000. So 3% of 1,000 is what, guys? How much am I willing to lose? 30, perfect, John. So I'm willing to lose $30. It means I'm, to, I'm willing to lose $30 on each trade that I take. We're rounding up, guys. So can start sending in your questions. Well, willing to lose $30 on each trade that we take, that I take. So now, with a lot size of one is to 500, remember we said that our 500 um, would fetch us, one is to 500 would fetch us 500,000. So I have, I have in my account, 500,000 units to trade with. I've got 500,000 units to trade with. So what I do, the lot size I would mostly use most of the time is a lot size of 0 0.5 or one, or mostly 0 0.5. I use crazy lot sizes. If I use a very crazy lot size that you see, then just know that the money in that account is very, 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 very big. <laughs> okay, so I'm most times I scalp. So they are short, short trades. Um, so yeah, 0 .0, 0 0.5, right, or one. So with, so with a lot size of 0 0.5, so let's say, or let's say with a lot size of, of one, right? So lot size of one becomes a standard lot size. 
So that means I have the buying power of 100,000. But I, I personally will not do this. Frankly, I won't do this. I won't do. I won't do it with. So if I have one thousand, I won't actually trade lot size of one because of this buying power I have. So that means one trade is already taking hundred thousand from my. That's too much. So I use a lot size of zero point five, right? Which zero point five will fetch us how much? That's a, a mini lot size. So that's fifty thousand. Yep. So that's fifty thousand units. Okay. So now with this zero point five, what I then do is I enter multiple trades. And then I set stop loss, right? Stop loss as just $30, right? So I set stop loss as just $30. So for each trade that I, I take, I'm willing to lose, I'm willing to lose. Um, so for each trade I take, the broker takes how much for me? It's 500,000 divided by, divided by 50,000 to know how much the broker takes for me. So from each, for each trade I take, the broker takes $10. The broker keeps ten dollars. I just did five hundred thousand divided by fifty thousand. The broker takes just ten dollars for my one thousand, which is a smart move, right? Because I'm just trading zero point zero point five, and then I'm willing to lose thirty dollars on that trade. However, if this trade moves in twenty pips, this trade moves twenty pips. Zero point five times ten. That's five times twenty. I could make a hundred dollars now let's calculate how many pips will give us so this is 20 pips in profit i could make a hundred dollars i want to show you how this is proper risk management that we're talking about a very proper one <laughs> i want to show you how how you your calculation of pips really plays out and the amount you can get so can someone do the calculation for me based on what i've thought 30 30 dollars will give us how many pips 30 dollars will give us how many pips those who remember those remember that formula I gave. Thirty dollars will give us how many peeps? How many peeps? How many peeps? How many peeps? You guys, remember how? We, remember our lot size is zero point five, right? Who? Anybody? 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 No, not sixty, not sixty. So you you have supposed to, someone is calling John. It's very simple. The formula I gave was your your the dollar that you want to risk. Right, so the amount of dollars you want to make divided by your lot size times ten, right? Divided by your lot size times ten. So if we our lot size is zero point, is zero point um, what is it? Zero point five, right? That's the lot size we're using times ten. That gives us five, five. Then we now do thirty divided by five. All right, who is saying three hundred? All right, so that gives me six peeps. Are you guys saying? So I'm willing to lose thirty dollars if the market goes down by six pips. I'm willing to win, get hundred dollars if the market goes up by by twenty pips. All right. So there is something that Coach Ishmael says, which makes a lot of sense, and he put it on the group. I don't know how many of you saw it. Let me clean this. He says that what he likes to do, he says it is either one is to one is to three, which one of you didn't understand him, or one is to two. That means his loss is one and his profit has to be times three of his loss. Or his loss is two. I think he said three of for one of them. His loss is one and his profit has to be times two. You could also do one to four. This is where our different take profits come in. Take profit one, two, three, you get. So while I'm willing to lose 30, I'm willing to gain 100 plus but i gain this 100 plus by entering multiple trades so since i have a buying power of 500,000 it means i can enter as many trades as i want with a lot size of 0 0.5 so and then i'm not greedy all i want is just market moves in 20 pips and i make my money but the sweet part is that if you increase this from a lot size of 0 0.5 to a lot size of 1 right to a lot size of 1 all of these figures will change it will all change a lot size of one fetches you 500,000 500, units. Is that correct, guys? Oh, did I say 500? 100,000 units. No, 500,000 units, right? Because it's one. I thought it was five. If I reach 100,000 units, it means I can only take five trades with a lot size of one, right? And with that, I'm, they said I'm, I should be willing to lose $10 because $10 is 3%. This is actually not wise at all. Not wise because your loss would obviously not be, your peeps would be very close in range. 
Now let's let's do the same thing. Now with that lot size of of one of one, we're supposed to lose just ten dollars, right? So let's do the calculation again. Can someone tell me in what would our stop loss be in pips? So this is supposed to be oh what would our stop loss be in pips? So it's supposed to be thirty dollars because it's supposed to be three percent of your account. So thirty dollars. So what will our stop loss be in pips? And then let's do take profit. Take profit would be. I hope you guys are following the. I hope it's not too much math in there. I hope it's not too much math in there. Just no problem. Just go through the video again and again. You you get a hold of things. So guys who are doing calculation for me, what will our um this thing be? And then also let me know what the. Can someone help mute? And if you have questions, please drop your questions because I'm actually done. Once we do this, then um I'm done. So let's say we want to. Um, someone said three. Can someone confirm that it's three? Let me do the calculation myself. Can someone confirm that it's three? So we have 30. Um, our lot size is one. So that's one times 10 equals to 10. Yeah, and then we now do 30 divided by 10. All right, correct, it's three. So you see, I told you our, our stop loss will now be closer, do you get? So which doesn't make sense at all. You 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 will you easily hit the stop loss. Right, you easily eat the stop loss and lose your thirty dollars. So you want the stop loss to be uh, a bit away, right? Um, except you're actively scalping. Then your take profit. Let's say we, from this we want to make. Let's do one is to three. Yeah. So if one is to three, what would then happen is that you want to make times three of what your this thing would be. So that. Um, so let's say I want to make hundred bucks again. Let's just assume hundred dollars. So how many peeps does it have to go in profit for me to hit $100? How many peeps does it have to go in profit for me to hit $100? Can somebody tell me? Those who are following. How many peeps does it have to go for me to hit $100? How many peeps, how many peeps, how many peeps? How many peeps will give me $100? So remember our lot size is one, right? Anybody? How many peeps does it have to go for it to hit $100? Who are the mathematicians for us that year? Who are the mathematicians? Oh God, are you guys sending in your questions? Yup, that's correct, 10 peeps. So, it would, so now you see why I say that most people like this kind of lot sizes is because with just 10 peeps in movement, you know the other one was 20 peeps. So with just a movement of 10 pips, you can easily make a profit of $100. You can, it is 10 pips, eh? when I'm scalping, I hit 10 pips very fast. So you can literally hit your target so fast if you are trading with a huge lot size. But with this kind of, and obviously you're not mixing your entire market, but one thing you should bear in account is that you can hit your stop loss quickly because you're setting a stop loss of just three pips. Three pips is just one, two, three. You get so you can easily hit your stop loss, take it out of the market, and you lost thirty dollars. Imagine losing thirty dollars, small, 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 small. You will eventually reach your one thousand dollars. All right, so it's it's um it's not ideal to use a lot size of one in this kind of account of one thousand dollars. Right, you might need to take your account further, and then you'll be able to now increase your amount you are willing to lose. All right, so I think that's clear, guys. If, if that's been clear so far, it makes sense what you've heard and. You are willing to apply, to start applying all that you've heard. It's a lot of information I've given. I do know, but just keep write down the formulas and keep applying it. And with time, you get used to it and know what you should do, right? So um, if, if that's made a lot of sense and you've understood thoughts when you're full of thoughts far to this point, please, guys, could you just put fives for me on the chat box? Okay. If you are full of thoughts, if you've got some questions, but if you are full of thoughts far, and it makes sense. It's clearer now for you. When you enter the market, you enter with more wisdom, more insights. Like, you're not entering like a novice. They say, let us copy and paste. Oh, you're doing it. Like, that's not why you're in the academy. You're in the academy to gain knowledge, right? That's the fundamental reason. That's number one. If you feel that reason, you have just lost your money because that's what you are paying for. Sometimes you think you're paying for the signals, but no, you're paying for the knowledge. The signals is just an added advantage. Let's say uh, I am wants to do for that Christmas for you. That's all. So yeah, let me see some fives. If it makes sense, please put some fives. I'm seeing fives. I'm trying to trace um, where are the questions. 
Okay. But what happens, please, the formula again. I think I've given the formula again. Did you get it? If you didn't get it, let me know. Please, what happens when you break even? All right, I don't break even. I don't like the idea of breaking even, frankly speaking. Let me clean this and, and write the even. So I don't personally like the idea of breaking even um, because, I mean, you break even because you're trying to be smart, but I don't think that's a smart thing. What is rather smarter is taking multiple trades on one particular um, idea that has been called. So when you break even, what you're trying to, or maybe the person can, ask exactly what you mean by um, what happens but what no normally would happen when you break even is that um let's say you, you you this is your entry point let's say 55 is your entry point right take profits tp1 becomes let's say 60 tp2 so it's tp1 um tp2 becomes let's say 80 and then tp3 becomes 100 right and then they tell you stop loss of let's say 40 SL, right? Remember to always calculate how many pips is your stop loss. Do it. Anytime you see level straight, calculate the pips. Don't just enter, copy, and paste stop loss without knowing how much it's going to take from your account. Very important. You don't take trades. See, this is a formula I use. Whenever I enter a market, I enter a market with how much I am willing to lose, not how much I'm willing to gain. If you miss it, you miss it all. I don't trade with how much I'm willing to gain. I tell you how much I am willing to lose. So when I enter market each day, I'm entering with the amount of, with the fact of, okay, I'm about to lose $10 or I want to lose 20 Not I want to gain. It's rather I want to lose. So that you would, you would do away with break. Notice you're breaking of hearts. So oh, this happened, that happened. You have full control of what you can lose. Do you understand? But when you enter the market, what you can gain and you're losing sight of what you can lose, you blew your account. I will, we have a, we'll have a session on HFX, as I said, on, on Thursday by God's grace. The same thing. And I will show you some certain things to look out for as well when you are trading. To do the same, how you can also set how much you are willing to lose practically on, on HFX. I mean, it, you can determine the amount you put in. But there are also other small key things that some of us, we miss. You, you trade a set. Let's not get there. Let's wait till Thursday instead. All right. So um, this is that. Your stop loss. Your take on one, two, and three. And then what you, so you set maybe TP2, right? So you use TP2 as your take profit. So you're not, you're not considering TP1, you're using TP2 as your take profit. When we say we break even, what we're trying to say indeed is that when this trade gets to, um, when it's 55 gets to this point, which is our take profit one, people will now tell you, or, or the educator will tell you, um, move your stop loss to your, entry point so that you break even so your stop loss that was 40 becomes 55 so 55 now becomes your new stop loss and you enter this this trade at 55 so you can't edit it it's 55 you entered but you can edit your take profit and your stop loss you can't edit your entry point but you can edit your stop loss and take profit you can't, you can't also edit your lot size once you put it it's done right these guys are smart so once you edit your stop loss to 55 what then happens is that if the market doesn't go in your favor from this six if it, the market be, starts going down right and it hits your stop loss at 55 remember your entry point was 55 initially what what we mean by break even is that you don't make any profit and you also don't make any loss you come out even no no you are neither here or there so you just say father we thank you <laughs> now what would have happened to me did not happen which is probably it could have gone down to 40 and then at the end of the day you come out in loss but instead of that trying to be smart you just move it to 55 but that means you have to monitor that means you have to be to to check for the signals if there's an update if they are now saying okay it has hit tp2 now move to tp1 right so instead of doing this i personally would just enter at this point this is just my own opinion i enter at this point i instead of taking tp2 i take just tp1 because once it hits your take profit, it will come out of the market right your market is not active so people who put tp2 they want to make a lot of money but if my TP1 is up to 5% of my capital, why not? Why do I have to wait till I hit 20%? That's get rich quick scheme. And that's not what we're about, right? So to be a much smarter trader, because it's smart to take TP2 or TP3. But for me to be much smarter, what I do is for that um, entry, if I'm very sure of it and certain, instead of taking to TP2, I will calculate the difference in pips, right? I do that a lot. Calculate the difference in pips and then see how many... Um, trades extra would i need to enter at this range of 55 so if depending on the number of pips i can now enter maybe 
one additional trade. So instead of just entering one trade, I will enter two trades, and both trades will have a stop loss of 40 and a take profit one of 60. So when the two of them hit take profit one, I'll be in profit. Another smarter reason why I do that is because for every trade, because the trades move in this direction of, let me use blue, of upward, and then it goes downward. We find out that movement happening all the time. Yeah, higher highs, lower lows, and all that stuff happening in the market. Because of that, it is much easier and faster for my trade idea or that trade to hit TP1, to hit TP1 than it is to hit TP2 or TP3. For every trade, there is a very high probability. In fact, once a trade is active, it has 85% probability of hitting your TP1. 85% probability of hitting your TP1. So that probability is much more than hitting TP2. What it could also happen is that it will almost reach TP2. And because you set it at TP2, so because it didn't hit TP2, your trade is still active. Almost getting to TP2, and then it starts going down to hit your stop loss. And someone will say, oh my God, I would have just taken my small profit and that left the market. You're not a profitable trader. You're not a disciplined one as well. So these things help you gauge how you want to work with the market. Right. So th there are also other things to look at. So sometimes if I analyze the market and I see that, oh, this market has a very high possibility, right, of hitting TP2 or TP3 based on my own personal analysis, apart from what the educator has called, then I can go in for a TP2 or a TP3. Maybe I don't want to scalp or something like that. I don't want to take multiple trades. I'm just going for one. It's very possible. Right, but as time goes on, because we would also someone asked about how to scalp and all that, we'll have a class on scalping. We would also have more classes concerning market analysis, precisely because even though a trade idea is called, it's not just copying and pasting. Copying and pasting are for newbies. But the idea of being an academy is so that you yourself become good enough to now start saying, okay, this is where this trade idea is wrong. This is the error in this trade. This is what should have been done instead. Do you understand? So you're able to see the lapses and correct it and become much better. Do you get my point? So as time goes on, you'll be able to analyze the market much better. So you use, I use trade ideas from levels a lot, but sometimes I just edit it a bit to suit my account size. Okay. So I did a trade a bit, depending on what I'm willing to win and what I'm willing to lose, make some little analysis here and there and enter the trade. There are times I have traded off like against the trade idea. Trade idea was called for a buy. I was taking a sell. I was like, this guy's will soon change it to a sell. Because from what I'm seeing here, it's obviously going to be a sell. And within 20 minutes, our educators will not change it and say it's not a sell. And I'll be laughing. But I already foresaw it before they changed it. That's the idea of market analysis. That's the idea of being a part of what we're doing. So you yourself, you can predict things. But some of you will be in that idea for a buy. And you're not losing. I don't think what is happening. You don't know that the editor has changed the trade. Because in levels, the trades do change. It can, it can flip, right? So what they are calling for a buy, they can change it about next to us and say it's a sell. Because they are also actively analyzing. So whatever they see in the market is what they tell you. So you want to pay attention to this. Don't just copy, paste, and go and see. No. You have to be active. Check what is going on. Um, but one, one thing is for sure. With the little basics, you can get profits. That's one thing that's for sure. But if you want mad profits, you need to come out from the basics and go a step further. And then you will now understand why are you making your losses or your lessons and why are you making your profits. Okay. Any other question? I think we should round up. Wow, I'm actually tired. It's been a long one. My God. Um, uh, five, but I'll have to watch this over again. Okay. I usually just come up in tens. I must fly by 10. Okay, so the multiplication by 10 is it's like it's the rule. Do you understand? It's the um how do I put it? It's the same way you say you have a lot size of 0 0.1. You can ask why do we have a lot size of 0 0.1? Do you get so it's sorry to call sorry for that. I was trying to bit, but it's actually just the rule, right? It's a formula that's used. Maybe I could do some research to see why exactly they use 10 and not 100. <laughs> But for now, it's um it's just the rule that's there. Uh, you always multiply by ten. You could as well just as well. What 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 I would have also said is very simple. Just like if I say it that way, some of you would um you might not understand. So for every lot size of zero point zero one, and that way to remember it, for a lot size of zero point zero one, what you are doing is you are making point ten cents in the market for a lot size of zero point zero one. For a lot size of zero point zero five, that means per peep, by the way, per peep. So 
for us as 0 0.05, you're making 0.50 cents per peep, right? Per peep, that's what it means. Okay, so I could tell you cram it this way, but sometimes you might wonder, well, how did we get this? It's multiplied by 10. Okay, so um, you can also cram it like this and not do the multiplication. Um, uh, my own request is can you put the formula on the Blaze Nation family? Okay, I try and do that. I try and do that after after now. But any other question from the guys, from you people? Any other question? Everything absolutely clear. Everything absolutely clear. All right, so guys, do not miss the training on 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 Thursday. We're going to do the exact same thing. Let me um.